I hereby call to order this regular meeting of the West Valley City Council. It's Tuesday, December 9th, uh, 6.32 p.m. By way of roll call, uh, we'll note that uh, Council Member Lang is asked to be excused tonight, as well as uh, Mayor Bigelow, and uh, we we'll expect them to see them at uh, a future Council meeting, but uh, for tonight they will be excused, and the five of us will take up the City's business. Uh, along with uh, Acting City Manager Paul Isaac and City Recorder uh, Sherry McKendrick joining us on the dais. Uh, by uh, tradition, this council uh, starts its meetings with an opening ceremony and we take turns with an opening ceremony that ranges sometimes from uh, a joke to a prayer. And tonight we've asked uh, District 3 Council Member Steve Bueller to provide that opening ceremony with us and turn the time over to him. Thank you, it's District 2. Oh, District 2. Fine. But we've moved chairs tonight, so we're all we're all up. But uh, one year ago, this uh, body passed a resolution naming December 10th as Hank Price Day. Hank Price was the first mayor of West Valley City, and uh, you saw perhaps coming in some displays out in the hall with respect to that. The city was incorporated in 1980 and was a week old when. There was a movement to disincorporate it and another election to see if it should stay a city or be a city that only lasted a week. The Historical Society and uh, our former mayor, Mike Winter, who sits on that board, um, sent me some information, the clips from KSL TV that date back to 1980 to remind us of the history of the beginnings of our, our city. And I've asked uh, that those three short clips be played. They're not uh, as great. And, video qualities we're used to these days, but they date back to uh, the dinosaur days, the origins of West Valley City. So if we could uh, take a look at those, please, Mr. Arslanian. residents of Granger, Hunter, and Chesterfield are eligible to vote, and the prediction is that almost half those people will get to the polls before they close tonight. If the incorporation proposal is approved, West Valley City would be Utah's second or third largest city. The exact population really varies depending on who you talk to. Incorporation supporters say the city would give residents better services at less cost than the county provides right now. Opponents say just the opposite. They claim incorporation would make services more expensive and increase taxes. Voters here are not only deciding on incorporation tonight, they're also voting for the mayor, city commissioners, and city auditor they'll need should incorporation go through. Very frankly, this new city was originated in controversy, and unfortunately, some of that remains unresolved. Of course, it would be inappropriate for me on this occasion to further comment upon that subject matter except to say that if the incorporation remains a fact, and I'm sure all of you hope that it does, I urge all of the citizens of West Valley City to lay behind them their differences and to unite behind these new officials and to work for the common good. After all, that's the democratic process and has been one of the strengths of this beloved country of ours. The incorporation of a city this large is unprecedented in Utah history. West Valley has roughly 70,000 people and also has a lot of problems. It's possible West Valley could be a city just one week. A disincorporation election is scheduled for July 8th, one week from today. West Valley officials will be in district court tomorrow asking for an injunction to stop that election. Right now, the city has no money, and a $2.8 million bank loan is being held up until after the disincorporation vote. The mayor and two commissioners are personally paying for the gasoline being used in the city's police cars. At this morning's swearing-in, Mayor Price said the city is already $1.8 million in debt. About the only thing West Valley City has right now is a mayor, a commission, a police force, and a municipal hall that's still under construction. It's going to take at least until the end of the year before the city gets up to full speed. At noon today, the Salt Lake County Sheriff's Office pulled 80 of its deputies out of West Valley City. So now it's up to 43 officers of the West Valley Police 
force to maintain law and order. The city expects to hire 20 more officers by the end of the year. For the next six months, West Valley City will be buying services from Salt Lake County. West Valley City's fire protection will be the responsibility of the county fire department. Roads and streets will be repaired by county crews. Garbage pickup will still be under contract to the county, as will street lighting and snow removal. West Valley does have its own planning and zoning commission, but again, it will depend on the county for engineering help. In January of 1981, West Valley City has the option of dropping the county contracts and providing its own services. Realistically, how many of those services after those six months will be taken care of out of West Valley City? If we find that we can contract it more economically uh, and we can get the level of service uh, that people desire, we will contract. If we can do it inside, uh, in the house, uh, less costly, and uh, maintain that level of service, we'll do it in-house. One more thing some may be wondering about Utah's newest city. Remember the contest a few months back? A man won a color TV for coming up with the name Ochre City. Well, the Chamber of Commerce let the guy keep his prize, but jumped the name Ochre City. So, in more ways than one, West Valley City is here to stay. Martha Jones, Eyewitness News. Thank you. I wanted to point out that uh, in the second video, the gentleman speaking and then swearing in Mayor Price was uh, the late uh, federal judge David K. Winder, who was a West Valley City resident. And uh, I think uh, the final note there, we seem to be here to stay you know, about the business of the people and uh, hope they are trying to do a very good job for them to provide the services. But I just want to take that look back that uh, our somewhat uh, Bumpy, bumpy ride we had in the beginning of our city. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member, for that. Uh, we now turn to uh, item five, which is the uh, approval of our November 25th, 2014 regular meeting minutes. Those main minutes are before you now, Council, for uh, discussion, uh, amendments, and approval. Mayor, I'll move for approval of the minutes. Second. Okay, we have a live motion to approve the minutes of November 25th, 2014. Uh, all in favor of approving said minutes, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes uh, unanimously of those present. And we will move on to item six, to where we have a, a very special uh, employee of the month award. And we've asked uh, at large council member Lars Nordfeld to uh, lead us through those ceremonies this evening. Council member. Thank you. Um, this is a, a letter we received from the Public Works Department. They say, we in the Public Works Department would like to nominate Jeanette Carpenter for Employee of the Month. Jeanette is always willing to answer questions about her accounts, process budget transfers in minutes, help with budgets, and treats everyone with respect. She is very customer-oriented and is always willing to drop whatever she is in the middle of doing to help us. She explains things so we can understand them and is always cheerful and happy when working with any of us. Jeanette is very confident at what she does. The budget process can be a taxing time for us and for her, but she is always willing to help. She is always dependable. We don't know what we'd do without her help. For these reasons, we would like to nominate her. We join with the Public Works Department in congratulating Jeanette Carter. Thanks for your continued service to our great city. Okay, item seven we will go to is our the time that we set aside for uh, to receive uh, comments. And first and most uh, importantly is our the time we set aside uh, for public comments. 
We have a, a sign-up sheet in the back, and we do have uh, one sign-up here, so we'll uh, ask uh, Mr. Paul Adams. Here, you come to the microphone and uh, uh, has five minutes to address the council, and uh, we're all ears to listen. Great. <coughs> Excuse me. Good evening, members of the council, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen in the audience. I'm here tonight to bring up a situation that I think has fell through the cracks and become a real thorn in my side as well as in my neighborhood's side. I became a resident of West Valley City in 1991. I've lived in the same home since I moved here. I've watched my neighborhood go down and down and down. Many reasons for that. But the biggest problem I'm having right now tonight is I have a issue with uh, what you call uh, garage sales or yard sales or whatever. I happen to have a home and property at the end of a adjoining street that goes a, oh, not a cross street but goes off from our main street. There's people that have moved in there at the beginning of this year that are what I call junkies. They load a pickup truck full of junk and bring it home daily, two or three times every day. By May, when the sixth yard sale had transpired at that home, I called and tried to make arrangements to get somebody to do something about it. It's my understanding that only four yard sales are allowed per year. The problem with this yard sale is they bring in two great big signs, the size of a sawhorse, A-frame type signs, and they place them out in the parking area in the street. One of them they place right within three feet of my driveway. Now I don't particularly want attention called to my house. The neighborhood has deteriorated. We have several drug homes in the area. We have gangbangers that are also in, this, in the area living there. And I don't particularly want my house to be poked out and set by signs saying, hello, we're having this. I don't want people looking in my yard. I feel very paranoid about this. I've had issues where people have attempted break-ins and I've had property damage and vandalism. I don't think this is something that I need. But I find out that the police department doesn't care. They tell me, well, we do not handle anything in the way of code violations. You'll have to get with the code violation department. Now I did this back in about May. We went for about uh, four or five weeks with a gentleman that informed me it was impossible for him to do much because he only worked Monday through Thursday and he only worked uh, 10 hours a day for those four days and if anything happened any other time it's too bad however if I wanted to go take pictures and provide descriptions and dates and time and what have you and submit them to him he would go over them well, much arguing and much cantankerous baloney transpired after that because I couldn't see exactly how that was my job to be enforcing the code. So anyway, he said, I know the landlord of the person that you're talking to. I've had many, many runs in with this gentleman. I've had him in court several times. He does this all the time, violates the law, et cetera, and so forth, and I will get it stopped. Okay, a meeting later on in a couple of three weeks, said he'd been over there, talked to the landlord, it wouldn't happen again. Well, that's fine. There's now been eight yard sales, the latest of which was Saturday. I took it upon myself Saturday to take pictures of everything. The saw horses that are this high, the A-frames that say yard sale with the signs on them, that's out in the asphalt in the middle of the street on 4400 West. There's one on each side of the street pointing down a half a block 
into this circle where this person lives. I took pictures of the yard sale. He had something in the neighborhood of about 10 Christmas trees for sale. Not the er, live Christmas trees, but the artificial type. He had appliances and everything else all over his yard. I've seen him drag them in behind his truck in a trailer and in the back of his pickup truck. He had a fridge that he come out of his yard with and went someplace and he's come back with his truck empty in about a half an hour. So there definitely was a yard sale going on. There was also one in October. About 30 seconds, Mr. Adams. Okay. My problem is, is going with the zoning commission or the uh, code enforcement, they tell me today, well, we've added another day there, we're here Fridays, but we it can't do anything unless you want to get us pictures. Now what's up with this? My problem is, who's enforcing the law? Do we only enforce the law at certain hours of certain days? Do we let the law go to heck the rest of the time? We ignore it? We don't have any need for this? I think we've got a serious problem here. The police department will not, I've called them about the signs, they tell me it's code enforcement. Code enforcement says they do nothing with the streets, nothing with the streets. Police department will have to take care of that. So all I'm doing is running around chasing my tail and trying to find out what kind of camera I need to satisfy this man's pictures. I need some help, gentlemen. I need some help. I'm here requesting that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Anyone else came to utilize this comment period? If not, then we'll turn to the next part of the comment period and turn the time over to Acting City Manager for any comments tonight. Uh, yes, sir. I, I would like to address and, and assure, it, was it uh, Mr. Allen or Allen is your first name? Adams. Adams. It's Paul Adams. And did we get his address? Okay. Um, I uh, consider your report very, um, very logical. I can I can hear the frustration in your voice, and uh, and I know that sitting here with us tonight is our uh, director of our code enforcement, and uh, I would ask him, uh, frankly, if you if you can stay to immediately get with you so that we can get to the bottom of that and, and get you the help that you. Uh, not only need but deserve. And Thank you. see if we can take care of that. Appreciate that very much. You bet. Okay, thank you for those comments. Any mem members of the council wish to comment on this or any other item? Okay, we do have a, a short meeting here that will run through the items. And uh, just for clarification, we have a study meeting uh, before each regular council meeting, uh, 4.30 each week, where we discuss the items on our agenda for next week. And so uh, if it appears that we move uh, quickly on these uh, uh, motor vehicle purposes, it's, it's because we uh, had uh, at least a week to discuss these items and, and ask all of our questions. And uh, so we're ready at this meeting for, uh, uh, for action on that. And so with that, we will ask uh, Acting City Manager Isaac to introduce Resolution 14-189, approving the purchase of three F-150 trucks. Thank you, sir, and that is exactly what the resolution is asking the council to consider, is the uh, replacement of the of part of our light fle uh, vehicle uh, fleet with the purchase of three um, F-150 trucks from Kengar Ford in the amount of about $90,000. Okay, council, any questions or need for clarification? If not, uh, a motion would be uh, in order on this item of business. Move for approval of resolution 14189. Thank you, Mr. Vincent. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. We have a live motion before the body to approve resolution 14 189 and 189 and approve the purchase of these trucks. Is there any discussion to that motion? Okay, seeing none, we'll call for a vote and ask all those in favor of approval to please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes unanimously of those present. And we'll turn back to Mr. Isaac for. The uh, introduction of resolution 14 190, please. Thank you, sir. This is a resolution to purchase 10 uh, new police sedans to be used in the patrol division of the police department, and it's uh, 
it's needed because we've been fortunate enough to receive uh, additional funding from through grants to hire uh, an additional 10 officers and this will now uh, with these new auto uh, vehicles they'll be able to uh, be used by these new officers that we're now going to be putting on board uh, by the way the amount of the purchase is two hundred and eighty one thousand dollars and by the way again sir th these are all on state contract they're all under the the normal process of how we purchase vehicles okay any other questions regarding uh, this uh, approval to purchase 10 uh, police cars not a take a motion move for approval of resolution 14-190 thank you mr bueller do i hear a second second Okay, we have a live motion before the city council to approve resolution 14190 and approve the purchase of 10 Ford police interceptors. Any discussion to that? Seeing none, we'll ask for a vote and have all those in favor to please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That also uh, passes unanimously of those present. Uh, any uh, need for executive session or any other business? Seeing none, we'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor of adjourning this meeting, say aye. 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 Okay, this body will stand adjourned. Thank you.